forsaken, gather us in the blind and the lame. All right, let's do this. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the edition of Deeper Farmer Cigar Garage Talks. How's everyone going tonight? Um, I'm doing really good. I'm shooting this on Sunday, Sunday night of um, deer season, opening weekend. Um, not a great opening weekend, I'll admit. Uh, we had our ups, we had our downs. Uh, we, uh, one of my daughters took a shot, uh, but I believe the deer might have spooked first and jumped. Um, we found just a trace of underbelly hair. No blood. Um, then the next team went out uh, on Saturday. Um, and one of them forgot to use the bathroom, so they wanted to call it a little early. And as they opened up the blind door, of course, there sat a buck. Um, they couldn't raise up and shoot in time, so it took off. They spooked that one. And then tonight, um, just skunked in general. Tons of birds, um, some really fat squirrels, some turkeys, uh, partridge. Um, a pheasant, too. <laughs> I was surprised to see that. Um, blue jays, a woodpecker, and a couple birds. My daughter is very excited to look up because she doesn't know what they are. But anyway, what are we smoking? What are we drinking? Uh, kind of a fun little cigar tonight. Uh, the local tobacconist was having a clearance sale. I've never heard of this one. A St. Louis Reserve. Um, SLR. It is their Reserve Especial. Kind of a fun little cigar. Lots of uh, bands to it. Really, really great draw. I'm kind of unfortunate that they probably won't carry this one anymore because it's actually a pretty good cigar. For the drink tonight, um, never heard of this company. Uh, it is the Fox River Brewing Company um, Oshkosh Appleton. Oh, it's an Appleton. Okay. Um, Wisconsin. It's called Red Bobber Raspberry Ale. I like raspberry ales. Um, <clears throat> going way back from college, actually, there was a, a friend, Jellico knows the name of it. Start with an F. Um, was a raspberry ale. Bought in like a champagne bottle. Uh, oh, God, Frangelico? That's not, that's the name of a liqueur. I don't know. Really good, good raspberry beer. Enjoy drinking. Oh, that does smell like raspberry. It's got a head on there, too. Oh, no. Not good, though. Smells good, but the flavor is flat. It's actually kind of bitter. Um, that's not bad. I'm going to finish it. Uh, it's actually kind of watered down. Like it's, It tastes almost like some of the flavor that went missing. Oh, well. Um... That does not negate me from drinking Fox River Brewing beers again. Who knows? Maybe they just the raspberry ale isn't uh, isn't their specialty. So we'll try again later, I'm sure. But tonight uh, we are doing. Oh, I do have one quick announcement. After shooting this video, I finally promise. I know I showed this off in another video recently. We're going to do the review. Uh, we're going to review the Jamaican Indian American rum that uh, I hypothetically made um, and then i'm going to uh finish that video of how the process what went into it how it was made um that is my goal before friday to get it posted um the yaman bollywood rum is what i'm going to call it anyhow tonight's video though another marriage talks i know i kind of stacking these suckers together sorry about that um I was going to do another topic, kind of off topic, um, but this one kind of struck me. This is something, a, a saying I have. Um, so I'm a huge, huge advocate of buying the smallest bed possible once you get married. That was just strange, right? Usually you always talk about buy the biggest you can, you, uh, you can afford. So buying a gun safe, you always want to buy the biggest one you can afford. Not for how many guns you have, but for how much, you know, that, as big as you can afford. Same with a freezer space. Don't buy for how much, you know, the size of what's uh, currently in your freezer. Buy the biggest one you can afford. <clears throat> uh, because when that stuff fills up, um, you're kind of stuck. 
and you got to make some tough decisions um, going forward. You know, do you have to sell some guns? Do you got to get, get rid of some of your, uh, your game meat? So they always tell you with a lot of that stuff, buy the biggest one you can afford. Well, here's some marriage advice. Don't buy the king size bed. Hot take, I know. Let's talk about it. So I don't know if it's still a thing. I know growing up, um, a big bed that a couple could buy was almost a status symbol. Um, you know, it's kind of the minimum you should buy is a queen size, and then you should get a king, a king XL. Um, and this is when I was younger. Uh, this does actually stem from my parents, who once they bought a king size bed, um, they quickly filed for divorce shortly thereafter. Uh, a couple other couples who I knew, uh, they wanted to, to, to posh it up. So they went and got themselves a king size bed and it's almost like they started fighting. They had relationship troubles almost as soon as the bed came in. Um, and I have a theory for that. So when we, uh, me and homeschooling mama first, first got married, um, we didn't have a ton of money. I believe we had a full-size bed. So the two of us um, stayed in a full-size bed. It was only not for long. It was only for a couple of months. Um, we kind of got our finances in order, and then we were able to buy a really nice bedroom set, and we bought a queen-size bed. Homeschooling mama tried to convince me, you know, no, 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 we should buy a, a, a king-size bed. We can afford it. Well, truth be told, I didn't want to spend the money on a king-size bed, plus... This theory I'd started to work on, um, that the king size bed leads to relationship problems. And more and more people I talk to, um, that's true. The bigger the bed, the more the problems. And here's my theory why. And it's, it's played out beautifully in our relationship, and I've seen it play out negatively in other people's. Why do you need a bigger bed? Okay. Uh, homeschooling mama told me that, you know, well, we have so many kids and they sleep inside our bed. Yeah, that's true. But when you're in a queen size or a full size bed, um, you can't go to bed angry. You can't have a my side, their side. Um, you can't be grumpy and trying to take over the sheets or, over the, you know, getting all upset at someone because their foot is on your side of the bed. When you have a smaller bed, you have to go to bed happy. I firmly believe that some of these people who get these bigger beds, that's almost a sign of them starting to distance themselves. Um, there's their your side and my side. The bed's so big that, you know, it's you know, we almost intentionally have to meet in the middle. But in something like a queen size bed, no, I can end up on her side, she can end up on mine. It's just normal everyday wear and tear on that mattress. Um, and I think that strength, ha forcing yourselves to have to resolve your issues before you go to bed. I'm 100% against having someone go sleep on the couch. Um, I think that's also led to a lot of relationship downfalls. You should resolve those issues. If you need a bigger bed because you know you need your space in the bed, if you need to send them to the couch, or you need to go sleep on the couch because you just need your space. Full stop. Red light. All action stop. What's going on here? What's actually going on? That is an early sign of relationship problems. That means that you're allowing things to fester into nighttime. You're allowing problems to fester and go unresolved. As I'll talk about here in a video coming up, communication is king in a relationship. And if you need to abandon, um, <clears throat> if you need to, sorry, protect your private space and sleeping by sleeping on the couch or having a bigger bed, then you need to look inward to your relationship. 
you need to look at how you can strengthen it. And that's an early sign. Again, I don't necessarily, I told my homeschool mom and my wife that, you know, I didn't want that because I believe it led to divorce. Well, no, it's not fully the fact that there is this king size bed, but more has to do with the fact that it's an early sign. If we can't uh, go to bed happy, uh, if we can't stand each other because of what happened during the day when we go to bed, then we need to stay up and fix it. We need to talk about it. We need to resolve it. Because it's not going to get better um, by having our own space and avoiding it. And I think that happens in a lot of relationships. People avoid actually talking about what happened. What they can do to fix it. And I think the king size bed is a beautiful example. Instead of trying to get closer and go to bed happy. No, I'd rather just avoid it. You have your side, I have my side. Um, it's the same thing when you talk to people who, you know, they don't share their finances, that they set split bills. Um, whole other talk on that too, but one of the earliest signs I too truly believe is when couples have to have their own bed or have to, you know, will go sleep on a couch on a whim or they need their own space in the bed so they get a king size bed. It's an early warning system. Tells you something's not right. So don't set yourself up. I firmly believe and I advocate to all married couples get the smallest bed possible. Queen or less. Because when you have a small bed, you can't go to bed angry. You have to work it out. You have to talk it out. When you have a small bed, there's no place for you to hide. There's no place for you to sit and stew about it. It has to be resolved. It has to be resolved now. So, my hot take, my marriage advice, get the small bed. Get the smallest bed. Both of you can get a good night's sleep. And if you look at me and tell me, well, that's a, a, a king-size bed. I really worry about your relationship. You need to do a lot of hard looking at that relationship to figure out why. Why can't you be close to your significant other? Why do you need your space? Is in case you get into an argument, then you need to argue better. Is it in case you have a disagreement? You've got to work on that. You need to work on resolution, not avoidance. Face the problem. Don't run and hide from it. Anyway, folks, hope, uh, hope you're sleeping close to your loved one tonight. <clears throat> if you're uh, looking at trying to get your own space once the sun goes down, Start talking to them. Figure out how you can make this situation better. Anyway, folks, I'm going to enjoy my cigar. I'm immediately going to cut into a video reviewing that rum. So you all stay safe out there, and we'll see you hopefully very soon on the next one.